So finally, all the cars are back out on track and there is a lot to talk about, but we wanted to gather the most interesting bits that surprised us from the first two days of testing. And finally, I'm back off my holiday. So thank you to Callum and the rest of the Driver61 team for keeping things going while I've been away. So there's been cars jumping up and down on the straights, very different driving styles, and even a first look at Red Bull's clever beam wing that is giving us mad double diffuser vibes. Now there is loads to talk about, so we've grabbed the best bits that most surprised us from the testing. So let's get in. Ball poisoning, what on earth is that? Well, it used to be a big issue for teams the last time they used ground effects back in the 80s. And it was actually one of the reasons Lotus started to develop the mad active suspension. But the effect is back. And yes, it is linked to the new ground effect tunnels. And I have actually driven a few cars that did this in my career. If the suspension setup isn't quite right and you get the right aero effects, or rather the wrong aero effects, depending on how you look at it, the car shakes up and down in this really violent motion. Now, there is a really interesting reason that the aerodynamics are doing this. And so let me pass you over to Scarbs to explain. It's uh, an imbalance between suspension and aerodynamics, something that we've spoken about before. So what happens is the car goes faster and faster, the what they call the aerodynamic center of pressure, which is kind of like your center of gravity for the downforce where it's pressing in the car, starts to move. And normally the suspension copes with that quite well. Obviously in more recent years, we've actually seen cars squash down on purpose, whereas now they're not really doing that. So what happens is the car starts to squash down. And as it squashes down, it changes its angle to the track, which means that the central pressure moves and the car suddenly stops working aerodynamics so well and one end of the car will pop up. And then as that settles back down, it will go back down and you just get into this cycle. Uh, that the car, which is literally why they call it poor poising, uh, goes up and down. Now, the car I drove was a really stiff sports prototype, and it did this a lot at high speed. In this case, it was the splitter, not the floor, but the same thing happened. The splitter loaded up as you got faster, then it would actually hit the track. At that point, it stalls and the suspension shoots back up, only for the splitter to start producing downforce again, starting the whole cycle off once more. On the straights, it can be quite tough because it moves you around so much and it can be quite hard to spot your braking point. But generally, once you do get on the brakes, the car sorts itself out. But what was far worse was that in this instance, the car still did it on the entry to fast corners, the ones where it's most important to get the car as stable as possible. And if the car is popping up and down with the aero and weight balance all over the place, you can't drive the car as close to the limit. And it's just a case of the team starting to understand how they set the suspension up. And we're not necessarily just talking about it being stiffer springs. It's managing the, the heave element, the pitch element to get that working properly, but equally the aerodynamics to stop it moving the central pressure quite so much. So this should be the first time teams will uh, experience this. As I say, we, we saw it in the past, certainly with the old ground effect cars, but certainly in between the more conventional floors, it happens and it's just something that will get tuned out. And I think occasionally some teams will have a problem during free practice, but they'll just iron this out. This is just teething problems. So it's going to be absolutely key for all the F1 teams to get this sorted. Now, it's obviously been hard to get lots of footage of the cars in testing, but there have been many reports of very different driving styles being tried out. And the majority of these will have been tested and fine-tuned in the simulator. But the most interesting ones were Verstappen and Leclerc. And that's because they were driving very differently to last year, and just shows how these drivers can adapt their driving style just like that. So, Leclerc first. He was taking the square racing line to the extreme, so rotating the car a lot mid-corner to straight line the exit. Now, this is something that many drivers do. Verstappen, Vettel, Schumacher, loads of them. The idea is to get the car in a straight line as soon as possible so you can get all of that horsepower down into the track and accelerate the car out of the corner. But in this case, it seemed dialed up a little bit more, and that seems to be down to these new Pirelli tyres. We know with these new Pirellis that they don't overheat with lots of sliding. So the driver should, in theory, be able to throw the car around a bit more, get the car moving uh, across on the treads more than perhaps they've been used to in recent years. And certainly in the hands of uh, Charles Leclerc, for example, was able to really kind of throw the car around and it's not to the detriment of getting the tyres to work. Now, this seems to be an approach that could work well, allowing the drivers to brake later and get on the throttle earlier. 
but it could upset these sensitive underfloor tunnels. And that leads us on to Verstappen. As I said, he is a driver that likes to drive the car into a corner hard, rotate it mid-corner and get a great exit. But this week, he's been taking a radically different approach braking earlier and taking a more geometric line through the corner. So that's a racing line that you could actually draw with a compass, the smoothest line through the corner. Now, it might seem a little bit strange, but it actually allows him to keep the car very stable aerodynamically throughout the whole corner, allowing the floor to produce downforce most effectively. And with more downforce, he could potentially carry more speed through the corner and get a good run out. But Scarves also has a bit of a mad theory to add to this. As you're going through a corner or you're braking, accelerating, you don't want the car to move about as much. And that used to be looked after largely by the suspension, obviously equally with driving style. They've got a lot less tricks with the suspension uh, this season. So it's having to come through much more in driving style that the driver will really want to try and minimize pitch and roll with the car. Now, what's something that's quite interesting is it's been picked up that Max Verstappen is being incredibly smooth with the car. And I've got a wild theory, and obviously we'll have to see how this plays out through testing in the first races. Rebel's front suspension, if you look at the top wishbone, normally it's kind of maybe inclined slightly, but effectively horizontal to the ground. Now that rear leg of the front wishbone is going right down. It almost looks like a pull rod going down. In fact, it's not quite as steep as the pull rod. Now that will increase uh, the effect known as anti-dive. So when the car starts to break and you get forward weight shift, that geometry will actually mean the front of the car will dive down slightly more. Now, I'm concerned that that could be an aerodynamic thing, but equally, if it is uh, a trick that Red Bull are, are playing with, there could be two reasons for this. First, Max is going very smoothly because the car will pitch an awful lot under braking. Then the other theory would be that if the car does pitch a lot down under braking, effectively the nose goes down to the track. That's really good for slow corners. And so far as we've seen, these cars are very poor in the slow corners because they can't get the front wing tucked down onto the ground because you have to maximize the use of the tunnels. So it could be something Red Bull are playing with here, um, or we just could be chasing shadows. We'll just to see how it shakes out over the rest of the testing. Now that is big brain design, if that's the case. And to me, it adds up. Red Bull have been using a lot of rake to, among other things, run the front wing very low in the past couple of years. That lower front wing would then produce a lot more downforce as it's much lower to the ground and enable exactly the sort of racing line that we were talking about earlier. Now the rear of the Red Bull is interesting too. In fact, we can make a whole video about that car. But testing is the first time we have seen it properly. And the most interesting thing so far is that rear beam wing. And many people have automatically labeled it the double diffuser. So exactly how does it work? Effectively what they've got is a, a biplane beam wing, uh, just as airplanes back in the old days used to have either one or two wings, two wings give you more lift in uh, Formula One terms, it gives you more downforce. So what's quite interesting is the lower beam wings working with the diffuser and the upper beam wing is really working to, to create downforce in its own right, but also it creates low pressure uh, in front of it. If you look just in front of it, you see the Coke bottle exit or the cannon exit, as I'm calling it, actually on the Red Bull, it's much more like a letterbox. And what that does, it creates low pressure and helps pull air out from within the side pods, which improves cooling because that means your side pods and all your outlets can be that much smaller. And I could see that this could be uh, something that other teams may have looked at already. Uh, if they haven't, uh, they may be a bit concerned about the legality. I think it's legal. But teams that are really using that cannon outlet at the back of the side pods really would want to be looking at this much closer. Now, teams like McLaren, for example, have that big letterbox opening and see if they could adopt this biplane um, beam wing to uh, extract more performance out the back of the car. Now, on the surface, there is nothing too radical about that. But when you take a look at the flow that is around this wing, it really starts to add up. You should check out this video about the radically different approach that Aston Martin and McLaren have taken with their front wings. Thanks again to Masterworks for sponsoring this video and to you guys for watching. I'm back now, so I'll catch you in the next one.